Hello, good day, welcome back to Go On The Run. And today I'm going to look at something I was playing with recently, uh, this lim limiter package. And I play with it and it's pretty easy to use. And I thought, hey, well, let me just make a video on it. And so hopefully this help you in what you might be doing or um, you know some future project. But a limiter comes in very handy when you write microservices. Either you're gonna implement limiting in your microservices, or you somebody else who writes a microservices so microservices going to implement limiting, so prevent you from calling their service too often. So I'll start by making a directory, and I'm gonna call it rate limiter, and this is example four or episode four, whatever you want to call it. Not example episode four um, for this miscellaneous um, thing. And so let's go into that directory. And so what I'm gonna do is start my video. Well, before I start my video studio code editor, I'm gonna actually create a mod file here. And so say go mod, mod creator module. So I say go mod in it. And I mean, I can write the whole enchilada, like, you know, straight verse, you come, whatever. So that works, but um, you don't have to be that specific about it. So I'll just create something. I don't know if I'm gonna always use that. Sometimes I use the shortest name possible. And then I'm gonna start my Visual Studio code. Now running the go mod command, um, go mod in it, is the same as if I create this mod, go that mod file and just simply put module and then type this. I mean, it's really the same. Eventually, um, go module would have put in the go version. So you would create it anyway. So let's create a file. And so I'll create a file and a directory at the same time. So this is a nice little tip for you VS Code users. So I'm gonna say example 01, and then I'll type main.go. And so what that does is it creates this main.go file and the directory, pretty sweet, huh? All right, so let's continue. So let me just start off with the basic structure for a Go application. Okay, so in this example, I want to pretend that I am calling an external service. Remember I say that if you call in some API and there are many of these, like you can um, you know, register to use um, some APIs for free, for example, like this is one I use for getting financial data. And it says, well, if you call in it only, uh, you know, you have like 10 calls per minute, then it's free. But if you want to do more than that, then you have to pay, right? So there are many such APIs like that. And so let's say I want to call some external service and I want to limit how frequently I call it. So I want to say that I'm only calling it every two seconds and at most I can burst, right? Or have a large, um, so a burst would be like, um, you are allowed to go be, um, call more, make more than the rate of, let's say every two seconds. I can burst and say like three. And what it means is I might be able to call three times per second or however fast I want. That's my burst, right? As quickly as I can. But still on average, it has to work out to be that I, I am not calling more than every two seconds. A much more simple example might be, let's just say I can call, make a call every second. So I might call every second, one second, one second like that. But then maybe I might wait 10 seconds and then it might say I can only burst up to 10, um, do a burst of up to 10. So then once I burst up to 10, I wouldn't be able to, call, I can go ahead and call again because I waited 10 seconds. Or if I'm allowed to burst and I burst and do 10, then I may not be able to call again until after I wait 10 seconds. So I hope that makes sense, but <laughs> it's really hard to explain without like a diagram or showing examples. So let's, let's just kind of write an example. So what I'll do is I'll write a simple function here, and this is gonna be simulating my external function, right? So if I call it API, it's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna write a simple function that when you call it, it waits a random, small random number of milliseconds before returning. So this is gonna represent us making an external API call that just takes some time to do some work. So that's what this function look like. And I'm going to let that be, create a random number um, between you know zero and essentially 500. And then I'm going to multiply this duration by time that 
millisecond. So essentially, my call here, if they call this function, it takes you know up to half a second before it returns, but random, right? So we know you can call this very easily with something like four, you know, let's say I do I equals, let's say 10 times. This is very easy. And if I were to run this, well, we know exactly what this looks like, right? Um, you can see it take a random number of time. We can see this from um, the mills to the, the time here, the milliseconds. And, you know, we just call it as fast as possible. But if I was rate limited to only make sure that I call, you know, every two seconds, and maybe I have a burst of three, then I wouldn't be able to call it so frequently, right? So in that case, how do we use the rate limiter? So what I want to do is make sure I don't call this thing much more frequently than the limit that I have paid for because I don't want to pay um, for overuse or something like that, right? So what I can do then is I can say, let me create a limiter. And so the limiter package is pretty um, easy. It's, um, this is the package. It's actually golang.org x. I think it's um, being worked on. That's why it's not quite in this x. I think this x um, sub package is where they do like testing for new things. So I, when I type this, you can see if I go over here, it's going to tell me that oh, I need to delete the import or get this package because delete it's often made delete because I'm not using it yet. And of course I want to get it. I can also just type go get once I put it in my program, I could just type my source. I could type go get at the command line and I would do the same thing. Um, but here I want to create a limiter. And so the way you create a limiter is you, it's called rate, as you can see just now. And there are many functions here. One is called every, and this says, um, every converts a minimum time interval between events to a limit. Now, why might you want um, a F to use every? Well, because before we can create, we have to create a new limiter, and the new limiter takes a rate, and so that um, so that limit is what you would create when you do like every. And so, for example, if my rate is let's say R, and my burst, well, I can do that and my burst is, let's say three, like I was saying, then I need to say, so let's call this um, colon um, limit colon equals. So that's my limiter. And I want to represent a rate that's every um, two seconds. So I just type every two times times that second. And so this creates a limit for me and see it returns rate that limit. And then I can use that limit here to create a new limiter. So this limiter is going to ensure that this constraint is enforced, that I cannot, I can make a call more than every two seconds and I can also burst. And I'm going to show you some different ways on how you can use this. So for example, if I was going to use this now, Instead of sitting in a loop and just calling this as frequently as I can, what I can do is I can then say, well, wait, I can say limit that wait. There are several ways you can use this. And you can see it says it's wait is a shorthand for whatever, but essentially what I'm waiting for, let me see with the explanation for this. So wait end blocks until limit permits event. Okay, uh, let's go back here. Wait n block until limits permits n events to happen. It returns an error if n exceeds the limit burst size. So that is why wait is just a shorthand for context one. And so what I'm saying is wait until I can send one thing. So I need a context here so I can use context that background. And so what this does do is just sit here and wait. I'm not going to check for error. Um, so I'm waiting here for one event to occur and then once this return, so this blocks and wait two seconds essentially, and then I can make my call. And so that's all there is to it. So let me go back here and um, and run.
So if I run this, and you can see at first I was able to make three successive calls. That was my burst. And then after that, I was limited, right? And you can see here, I made those three successive calls at four and a half seconds, 4.8, because you know my function is taking a random number of time, but as soon as I, fast as I can. But then after that, I have to wait two seconds and everything is two seconds apart. I can't call any more, any faster than that, right? So this ensure that I don't violate anything. I can burst up to three. And then after that, I have to do the two seconds call. I'll show you another way of using burst. So that's the simplest and most straightforward way to use, um, you know, limit. This is um, all nice and good and easy. But what if instead of trying to wait to send one event at a time, because this is what this is. Wait is a short on for wait N1. What if we wanted to wait for either the, the total amount we can burst or maybe say that we want to send two at a time or at most two, something like that, right? So let's see how we can do that to wait to send multiple events at a time. So let's do copy this. So essentially this is using wait N. So this is example zero two. And so let's open that, select main. And so in this example, I'm still using the same rate. I'm not gonna change that every two seconds. I can burst up to three. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, every time we go a loop, go around this loop, let me store the, um, well, burst actually is, yes. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to, Say n is equals to limit that burst. And so this return what our burst is. So you can imagine that I didn't know that I hope the limit was three, the burst is three, because maybe um, a function that's being given a certain limit to adhere to. And so I can check and see what the burst is. And so now that I have the burst, now I can call limit context background. Let's do that. And then that, and then I'm using wait n. So now what I'm saying is since burst is three, I'm saying wait until I can send n events, which is three in this time. Wait until I send, I can send three. You know, of course it could have been any number less than my burst, right? So less than or equals to burst. And so since I can, I'm waiting for three, once I, this form, I get past here and I get the call, then I know that I can send three things. So I can do another four loops. I can do for J colon equals to zero. J is less than N, you know, J um, plus plus, for example, and um, something like this. So now every time I get past this, I just send that N number because I pass N in, right? So I know I can make that many call. So now let's see what this look like. So I'm going to run example two and notice how we can burst three. Now we're waiting till I can send three events, right? Because I can burst up to three and there's my three events. And so you can see here 40, 41 seconds. Then I wait um, about six seconds and then I, I sent up to 47 and then I have to wait and then I can send again. Now my code here is a little bit wrong because if my intention was just to make 10 calls only, I'm actually making 30 calls because for each iteration, I'm waiting to send three and then I send three. So, so that's 30 calls. That's why this is still going on. And so you have to adjust your eye according to, you know, how many bursts you set. So, and then do the min of the remaining eye and so on. But that's something now that you know what that bug is, I think you know how you can fix it. So, so that's easy to address, but I just wanted to show you how to use wait and wait n. And then of course, point out that slight thing there. If that's the intent was only to send 10, you're actually sending 30 now, but now you know to fix that. Okay, so this still means that I'll, I have to wait until I can send. I don't, I don't get to do any work. Let's just assume that I'll, I'm reading data and some events or something and I'm receiving those. And then when I can send, I send whatever I have and flush or empty that buff, bu bu buffer that I'm accumulating the data in. Now, what I want to do is not to be able to just wait here and then try to read off the channel. What I want to do is if I can't send, then read off the channel 
accumulating the buffer. And then when I'm allowed to send, just send what's in the buff buffer and empty the buffer, right? So there's an allow also. So let's see how to use allow. So I'll copy this and create example three. We're going to use the same limiter, except now we want to change things up so that we check if we can, are allowed to send first. So what I want to do is to test if I'm allowed to send before I make my call. So I do if limit that allow, right? And if you hover over this, you'll see allow is shorthand for allow n. So you can go there and see what this is. And it says allow n reports whenever n events may happen at a time now. So I want to know if one event in this case may happen now. So <laughs> okay, geez. So if I'm allowed, then make this cause. Else, in this case, you know, I'm saying that in your application you might want to go get some more data. Um, in this case, I'm gonna log um, that oh, I'm not a, I can't send right. Just just info at this point to say oh, I can't send. Okay. So save that. And then I don't want to, if I just sit on a loop and did this, it's going to do as fast as possible. And I'm going to see a whole bunch of like, I'm not allowed to send a lot, not allowed to send between, because you know, this is going to be running pretty fast. So let me show you what I mean. That looks like. So if I did that, oh, I have to go get, so let's do it. Yeah, it should work on the command line. I've never had it fail on the command line when it's missing a package. But anyway, um, so if I, to go go run again and so you can see that um it burst and then because i did this 10 times it all they all fail but because it was running so fast it just go oh i can't i'm not allowed i'm not allowed what i actually want is if i'm not allowed to call well only when i make a call rather um then i increment i so i plus plus all right, because it's the only time I want to do 10 successful calls to the external API. So when I'm not allowed to call, I shouldn't be counting that. So I should only count when I'm call I can call. And so if we run this, you can see now what I was talking about. See how fast it's going? Um, and then I have a few times when I can call, but a lot of it is, oh, I can't call. So I'm going to pretend that I'm off doing some work. So if I'm off doing some work, you know, I'm sleeping for a little bit. Well, I can pretend it's sleeping. Um, and so for here, I'll do it as one time that one second to say that oh, I'm off doing some work, I'm waiting before I call again. But of course, we already have a function that does random sleep. So we could have easily just used this instead to say that I'll wait random amount of time um, or not wait or go do some other work, whatever you want to see it as. If I can't call now, will I wait or I go um, thing? So clean this up and run it again. And so we burst for the first three and then we're not allowed for a while, but then that's okay. We could have been doing more work and then we're able to make a call. And so this is not as crazy as all the not allowed to call that we had going on before. And so there you go. So this is how you can use allow. So in the next um, example and final example, I'm going to pretend that we are implementing an API that must enforce rate limiting. Now, like I said, if you have to implement an API to do rate limiting, chances are you'll be writing multiple microservices and you will have to do rate limiting for them. So the best thing is to use an API gateway. So let's just copy this though for now. This time I will do this and do um, server slash main dash go and I'll just um, copy all this stuff into it because I might want to use some of this guy back again paste that and then within four um, we're going to do a client also so we might as well put that in place one time I'm going to use this code for the client so we're not going to work on a client just yet let's work on the server so for the server, it's making the call. So we totally don't need this, okay? And so what we do want though, is a function that allows us to be our RESTful API handler. Now we can write this at the bottom or on the top, it doesn't really matter. So we can say func and let's call it API handler. And you know, if you haven't seen this before, this is just a write on this HTTP. I'm using HTTP response writer. Uh, response writer, here it is. 
and then um, R is a pointer to HTTP that request and then this doesn't return any value and so let's imagine now again that this is the API that's being called and so what we want to do is able to limit this API being called so we can say if the user and here I'm going to use a limiter that is global essentially but you can think of this limiter as being attached to the caller of this API so maybe I have a some data structure where I check the request and see which caller is calling, you know, the IP address and port. And I say, oh, if this person is calling from this IP address, I know it all, um, who they are. And I can look up some limiter that I created for them on their first connection or based on maybe information I have in my database. And so that way I can deal with multiple um, different user and rate limiting each connect client differently. So let's say I looked up this limiter and this is the limiter for this particular call, right? Now, I'm not showing all of that because you can use the imagination. So I'm going to say, if they're allowed to be called, right? Because I don't want to block on wait. So I don't want to do a wait. So I'm saying, if this um, API can be called for this particular user using this limiter, then, you know, we're going to let the call go through and do some work. Maybe I do this. And so what I want to be able to do is say, okay, um, I'm gonna pretend that um, it takes me some time to do the work. So that's gonna be the duration there. I'm going to sleep, right? That's how long it takes me to do the work. And then I'm going to write back to the user, of course, after I take some time to look up whatever information they want, F printf, uh, printf and I have to use double to write to the um, back to the user. And I can say, let's say this API is just simply telling you the time on the server. So that time is whatever, and time that now. That's something pretty simple. And then once I finish this, I can just return because I successfully handled this request. If I cannot um, handle the request, then I'm gonna do like log ROS, for example, and then I'm going to warn, you know, um, that, you know, this user made too many API calls, you know, too many calls, for example not handling this call, right? Something like that. Um, and so if I have these logs, I can go back through afterward or later and review to see who's abusing my API, right? Um, the other thing too is I want to respond to the user so I can say write header and write header. There we go. Write header status code. So HTTP, let see, bad request or something like that, right? Um, you know, you can look for appropriate status code and you can even write, send back some text. But in this case, I'm not gonna send back some text. I'm just gonna say bad request. Now, our limit here that I'm using, um, I said it was like a global limiter. So essentially I want it to be, well, not global, Go doesn't really have global, but you know what I mean? A, something that is package scope, I should say, package scope. And so main package scope. So there we go. So now, my API implements limiting. And so it's not gonna allow any caller to call it more than once um, every two seconds, and they can burst up to three. Um, so let's see how that's used. This out in main, we don't need this. Instead, in main, we can say log rust.info, and then I'm gonna say http.handle func, and then the pattern, let's call it just API, slash API very creatively and API handler, that's our API handler. And then here is just, um, we can do error colon equals HTTP that listen and serve and colon 80, 80 is where we say we're gonna listen and this is nil, we don't have a router. And so if we have an error, right? Whoever is not equals to nil, then we can do log, you know, rus that error and then we can print out this error. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be blocked listening here until we kill our application. But if there's an error for whatever reason, then it just go by here, not listen, and then we can see what the error is. So let's clean up and let's open a second terminal so we can do some testing. I'm gonna say go run and I'll do four, I'll do server main. And so we should see listening. Okay, great. And so if I do curl, and you can see 
I'm going to call my API, you see I have 200 OK. And if you don't have the curl command, don't worry, in a bit we will connect using our own client. But you can see the time on the server is this, okay? And so um, I'm gonna take this off and I'm keep calling this, I'll keep calling this. And you can see if I try to call this too frequently, it's gonna tell me it's not handling calls. But after two seconds, you can see it's gonna let one of my calls go through. Um, and so you can see here, I don't get back anything, but sometimes I get back, right? Now I didn't list here when the call goes through, so you have to see from the API where, when I call, sometimes I get back nothing, sometimes I get back something, right? Um, again, if I do this with V, we should see um, when I call it too frequently, you see bad requests, 400 bad requests. So now that we have that, let's write an HTTP client that calls our server. Now, our HTTP client is not gonna try and do any limiting. We know how to do it already. We're just gonna pretend that we're calling the server as frequently as you can, and we're just gonna check to see when it fails and when it doesn't fail. So let's go back and let's write the client. So we don't need this function, and we don't need to do any rate limiting here. And what we want to be able to do is get an HTTP client, so client, and let's use the default HTTP client. So default client, that guy. And then we're going to sit in a loop. And again, we want to try and make 10 calls, but of course we're not limited in any way. So let's do this. Let's do, well, easily we can just do client.get, this is get request. And the URL in this case is going to be HTTP colon local host, this is run my local machine, colon 8080 forward slash API. And so that is all that we need to make the call. And get returns, you know, the response and the, an error. So we can do RESP and the error, we can save it like that. And we can say if error is not equals to null, if error is not equals to nil, which means we fail to make the request, then what we can do is print out some message. We can say FMT that if the request fail, what we should do is probably delay a little bit, you know, like this and sleep. So if we fail to make a call, wait a little bit. Of course, we can check what kind of failure we can say. We see bad gateway or the documentation tells us that oh, when we call too many times, we get 400, we could check for that, that error code. And so we'll do that in a bit. We'll see why. Otherwise, what we can do, I use IO copy instead, because we're going to get back in body, in the response, there's a body, which is a writer. So I just do OS that standard out. So copy to standard out from response that body. That's it. And then the next thing I have to do is response that close, body close, so body that close. So that's it. And here again, I want to be able to, every time I'm successful, increment I. So, I mean, I can do that first, so I don't forget or something, but that's the gist of it, right? Very simple. Try to make a call. If it fails, wait a little bit. If it succeeds, copy the result out to the screen. Okay, so let's go here, let's do this, and let's run our client now. So we can go run and for client and main. And so you can see we burst um, three and we were able to get three successful call. What happened? Well, we want to be able to do 10 calls, but when we fail to make a call, we don't get an error back. So we have to check to see if there was a failure or, you know, if we have, um, so if response that status code, right, is um, not equals to, not equals, not equals to HTTP that status okay. So if you don't know what HTTP status code, you can look it up, but 200 okay is th this guy, you see 200. And that's when we made a successful call. And this is um, the return status code we got back from that call, which would be, I don't know, whatever bad request is, 400 or something. So if it's not equals to OK, then we had an error. And so at that point, then we should log it. So it's either we don't know all the ways that get could fail, 
you know, maybe it can reach the, this URL. So if for that reason we fail, then okay, we wait and try again. Or if it's because of one of this status code, then yes, we also fail there. So those two are the failure condition. So now if we clean up and we run again, we'll see that we burst with three, then we have some failures. And of course we try again later and then we're successful and then we have some failures. And so this example, we're not backing off and waiting until it's our time we are allowed to call. But what, because we know what to do that, we could put a limiter on this side also. What we wanted to show is that we can detect those failures. So there it is using the limiter, I think is a pretty cool package. I think it's very simple. I think it comes in handy. I had to write something a while back and I was trying to implement limiting and how frequently to, you know, eject a certain event and so on. And I got to tell you, it's a lot of work and I don't even know if it's completely correct, but at least using something in a limited package, it hides all that detail. And so you should totally use something like this if you have, you need to do anything that involves rate limiting. So, okay. I said I wanted to make this a short video, but it's way long. Um, thanks for staying, sticking to the end. Let me know what you think, if you like this video or not. I thought it was a lot of fun when I was playing with this. And then I thought, oh, why not do a video on it? So I hope you guys share my sort of enthusiasm for this sort of stuff and excitement. And definitely like the video, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Take care, see you in the next video. Bye.